Hi class, welcome to our next lesson on 12-4, which is and and or probabilities. So we've been doing some simple probability for the first three lessons. It's going to get a little bit more complicated here, but still nothing too bad just yet. We've got to talk about what mutually exclusive means here. It means that it's an event that cannot occur at the exact same time. That's what mutually exclusive means. So an example of this, here's a chart where it'd be like, what's the probability of picking a male in my classroom. Well, you would put the males in one bubble and you would put the females in the next circle and there's no possible way that you could be both. In our classroom there is no male and female students that occur at the exact same time. So you're one or the other. Whereas mutually inclusive means that there is an overlap. It might be um, what's the probability that you're a male or that you are left-handed. So you might have the males in one bubble and the left-handed people in another bubble. And then in the middle, you got to have the males that are also left-handed. So those people are caught in what's called the overlap. And so that would be mutually inclusive. So exclusive means that they cannot occur at the same time. Inclusive means that they can. Okay, And so that's going to affect our or probabilities, because here's going to be our equation for or probabilities, which you're going to write down right here. I think you guys already have this in your notes for or problems. What you're going to do is you're going to add and take out the overlap. So add the probabilities and take out the overlap. So it looks like this. To find the probability of this or that, of A or B, you're going to take the probability of A, and you're going to add it to the probability of B. But if there's an overlap, you can't count those twice, so then you're going to subtract the probability of A and B. So please write down this equation in your notes. You're going to be using that several times for today. So here's problem number one. I hope you guys are all familiar with the standard deck of cards. Um, there's four suits, hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs. And then it goes from ace to ten. And then there's three face cards, jack, queen, and king in each suit. Total of 52 cards. So what's the probability of getting an ace or a king? So as you can see, we have our or probability. So you're going to take the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So what's the probability of getting an ace? Well, there are four aces out of 52 cards. Plus the probability of B. What's the probability of getting a king? Again, there are four kings out of 52 cards. Now you need to subtract the overlap, and the overlap is the probability of A and B. So what cards are both aces and kings at the exact same time? In our deck, there are no aces and kings. There just are none. So what does this equal? 4 52s plus 4 52s minus 0 52s is 8 out of 52. So as a reduced fraction, 8 over 52 is 2 thirteenths. Our answer is 2 over 13. I hope you have more room than I do. Sorry about that. So for number one, the first question, 2 thirteenths is the probability of getting an ace or a king. Let's see how this changes for a 3 or a spade. So it's the probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So the probability of getting a 3 is 4 52s plus the probability of getting a spade. There are 13 spades in the deck out of 52 cards. Now you need to subtract the overlap. How many cards are both a three and a spade at the exact same time? There is one of them. There is one three of spades. So you subtract 152. So four plus 13 is 17 minus one. The probability is 16 over 52. And 16 52s reduces to four thirteenths. So four over 13 is our probability. What is the probability of getting a club or a face card for our last question with this situation? Well, a club, there are 13 clubs out of 52, plus the face cards, there's three in every suit, so 3, 6, 9, 12, plus 12 over 52, but now you have to subtract the overlap. So you've got to subtract the clubs that are also face cards, the club and face cards. And there are three of those that are clubs and face cards. So subtract 3 over 52. 
So it's 13 plus 12, which is 25, minus 3 is 22 over 52. 22 over 52, which equals 11 twenty-sixths. There's our probability for the last one on question number one. Okay, okay, question number two here. Another situation where we have or probability. A student is selected at random from a group of 12 male and 12 female students. So there's a total possible of 24. There are three male students and three females from each 9th, 10th, and 11th grade. So that means there's six ninth graders, three females, three males, six tenth, six eleventh, and six twelfth. Again, three of each gender, three males, three females, making 24 students. Find each probability. Well, for question number one, find the probability of a ninth or a twelfth grader. So you've got to find the probability of A plus probability of B minus the overlap, minus A and B. So ninth graders, there are six out of the 24 plus the 12th graders. Again, there's 6 out of the 24. Subtract the overlap. What students are 9th and 12th grade? 0. Minus 0 24ths. So 6 plus 6 is 12 24ths, which is 1 half. The probability of getting a 9th or 12th is a half. Next one, the probability of a 10th grader or a female. So you've got to add the 10th graders plus the females. There are six 10th graders out of the 24, plus there are half of them female, so 12 24ths, but then you need to subtract the overlap. How many 10th graders are also female? There are three 10th grade females, so you've got to subtract three 24ths. So 6 plus 12 is 18, 18 minus 3 is 15 24ths which reduces to 5 eighths. There's that one. Last question of this kind, find the probability that it's a male or not an 11th grader. So what's the probability of it being a male? 12 out of 24. Plus the students that are not 11th grade, well there's 6 11th graders, so that means there are 18 students that are not 11th grade, being the 9th 10th, and 12th graders. But then you need to subtract the males that are not 11th grade. So you got to subtract the three freshman, sophomore, and senior males. So you got to subtract nine out of the 24. Because there's nine students that are male, not 11th grade. So 12 plus 18 is 30, minus 9 is 21. So there's 21 out of 24, which reduces to 7 eighths. 7 eighths is the right answer for the last one. Okay, so that's or probability. Now and probability is next, and and probabilities are less likely to happen than or probabilities. What we're going to do there, instead of add with or probability, we add. So with and probability, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply. Now we need to assume that there's no replacement unless it's stated otherwise. I'll tell you with replacement if I want you to replace. Otherwise, you're going to assume no replacement. So here's this question from a standard deck of cards. What's the probability of getting two kings? Now I'm going to replace it. So basically what's happening is I'm going to fan the deck out to you. As I fan out the deck, there's 52 cards. What's the probability that you get a king? Well, there's four kings out of the 52. Now, we're going to put it back in the deck. We're replacing it. So then I'm going to shuffle up the deck after you put it back in again. I'm going to fan out the deck to you, and what's the probability of getting that next king? Again, it's 4 out of 52. So with and probability, you multiply. And this is and probability. What's the probability of getting a king and another king? So 4 over 52 times 4 over 52. You could do that in your calculator, and when you do that, you get 1 over 169. 1 over 169. There's the correct answer for the first one for letter 3. <coughs> Excuse me. On the next one, find the probability of, of getting two kings. This time, we're not going to replace. So I fan out the deck to you. You're going to pick a king. It's 4 out of 52. Now you're going to keep that king. You're not going to put it back in the deck. I'm going to shuffle it up again. This time, how many cards do I have? There's only 51 cards because you have one of them in your hand. 
Now out of 51 cards, what's the probability that you pick that king? Well, how many kings are left now? Instead of four in the deck, there's now three in the deck. So it's four out of 52 multiplied by three out of 51. So the answer there is when you multiply four 52s times three 51s, you get one over 221. So obviously the probability is a lot better if you can replace that king because there's one more king to choose from. Instead of um, four kings to choose from, there's only three if you do the without replacement. So there's our correct answers for question number three. Here's number four. A die is rolled and the spinner is spun. So this is and probability. So you're going to multiply the two probabilities together. What's the probability that you get a prime number and a yellow. So you're going to multiply. Well, the prime numbers on a dice are 1, 2, 3, and 5. There are four prime numbers on a dice. So it's 4 out of the total possible 6. And then a yellow. Here's a fourth. Here's a fourth. And here's a half. So the probability of it landing on a yellow is a fourth. So you take a, f a fourth times four sixths, and when you do that, you would get one sixth. The fours would cross cancel here, and you'd get one sixth. What's the probability of rolling a number that's greater than two and then a green? So again, we're going to multiply both probabilities. So the numbers greater than two are three, four, five, and six. There's, again, four out of the six outcomes on a dice that are greater than two. And then the green is a half. So four sixths times one half is four twelfths, and four twelfths is the same thing as a third. The correct answer there is one third. Okay, finishing up with question number five, we could do and probability here, but it might be easier to see a tree diagram. I think that helps us visually see this. So we're going to flip a coin three times. So it could be a head first, could be a tail second. And then head tail for the second toss, and a head tail for the third toss. So there's our tree diagram. We did this a couple days ago. Head tail, and head tail tail for each and every flip. So there's our three flips. What's the probability of getting three heads? So three heads is H, 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 and there's only one of those outcomes. One out of the eight. And the reason why we put this here under and probability is what's the probability of getting three heads? It's a half for the first, a half for the second, and a half for the third. So it's a head and a head, and another head. So that's why we multiply. A half times a half times a half is one-eighth. So there's our answer for the first one for question number five. What's the probability of getting no heads? Well, it's the same probability because it's getting all tails then. There's only, I kind of squeaked there, my voice is a little bit sore. Sorry about that. There's only one outcome that has all of them tails, meaning none of them heads. So once again, it's one-eighth. Okay. What's the probability of getting one head? So there's how many outcomes that just have one H? Let's see here. Here's one. Here's two outcomes that have one H. And here are three outcomes that have one H. So there's three out of the total possible eight outcomes that have one head. Now how about at least one head? So one, two, or three. Well, here's one. This one has at least one head. This one has at least one head. I guess all four of those have at least one head, right? And then this one has at least one head, and so does this one, and so does this one. There's only one outcome that has tail, tail, tail. So there's seven outcomes that have at least one head. So the answer is seven eighths. So there's your lesson on and and or probability. When it's and probability, you multiply the two probabilities. When it's or probability, sorry, I said that wrong. When it's or probability, you add the two probabilities and subtract the overlap. When it's and probability, you're going to multiply the two probabilities together. Let me know if you have any questions on that when you get to class tomorrow.